Hello, good people of YouTube. I finally fixed my audio. So it's all good now. Okay. <clears throat> oh, oh, you guys can't see me. Give me a one second, guys. Give me one second. That. Connect my mouse. What is going on? Why? All right. Okay. Da da da. <clears throat> okay. Gosh, what is wrong with my wire? What's what's wrong with the cable? Okay. You guys can see me now. Hello, good people. Hope you've all been well. Hey Cameron, hey Ezra. It's only you two talking in the live stream, as always, but yeah, for the picker stock, I think we'll wait till around 8 o'clock where we kind of peak in terms of uh, uh, viewers. So I'll put a text up actually being like, yeah, I'll be like that. And I'll be like, yeah. So pick a stock maybe starting around then, I guess. Like, we'll see. Um, uh, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> Pick a stock, maybe start starting at 8 p.m. Yeah, so we'll need to have a, li a little bit more people. It was quite a short notice uh, live stream, so not sure how many people will join today. If we don't have enough people, might even skip the pick a stock and just do the good old live stream. But um, yeah, We shall have a Korean barbecue in Hamilton. There is a new restaurant, my friend. Uh, we shall dine and be merry and uh, enjoy each other's company. <laughs> Hamilton, I am... Am I really going down to Hamilton? Uh, I don't know, man. It's going to be such a bizarre thing to... Um, you know... <clears throat> it's going to be so bizarre trying to get people into Hamilton, to be honest, eh? Oh, but yeah. Now I have Korean barbecue down in the South Island. <laughs> More places for Korean barbecue. Mate, there's tons of Korean barbecue um, all over New Zealand. Of course, most of them are in uh, Auckland, but... Yeah. Hey Taylor, good to have you in the live stream as well. Um, what's happening? I made six k over the school holidays. Woohoo! Making money. Side hustles are really nice for holidays, eh? Like you have to do something to you know to fill the bank up during the holidays. You can't do much as a student in those. A uh, few months, right? So might as well make some money. It's definitely something I would recommend everyone doing, but most people don't because, yeah, they're fortunate enough to get pocket money from parents and you know stuff like that. But I don't think that goes a long way. It goes a long way when you are able to earn your money. You kind of respect money more, and you kind of be a bit more reasonable with your purchases because you earned it, right? And you're gonna run out. Um, throughout the year, so you don't want to waste anything. <clears throat> so jealous. Are you sure, Cameron? We're both working full time, bro. <laughs> uh, but it is nice to make some money in the school holidays. I can't wait to flex my percentage on my port. Oh, this guy. I only got like 40 bucks left. Can't wait for you to give us some of that 6k. <laughs> Are you asking a teenager to hand the money over, Cameron? Come on. Yep, and he spent 2k on a Mac. 4k into crypto, right? <laughs> I don't think Ezra does crypto, man, unfortunately. Uh... 
Whoa, F crypto. Whoa, what is this language? You can't be saying things like that in my channel, bro. I'm pro crypto. I, I support crypto and I think crypto will become the future kind of currency, alternative currency. So, you know, you know, we'll have to pin this video up for like 10 years later till seven figures says it is going to be a pretty massive alternative uh, currency. I think that's where we're heading in terms of this crypto space here. Speaking of RAM, my number one pick is WBT, re-RAM technology. WBT. What is WBT? Okay, non-volatile memory using a re resistive RAM. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. We've been waiting. I flew back from Australia for this. What do you mean? Uh, you can only hear one year. What the heck? Okay. Oh, man. Ezra is so fail. He only has one year and buys under specs max. <laughs> Should I bet? Oh, come on, man. He's a student. Let him be. Like... I, I couldn't even afford a Mac with, back when I was a teenager, so that's pretty kudos, man. That's good times. Hey, Aryan, good to have you in the live stream. Assuming you got the free AirPods with your new Mac. No, I don't think he got anything free. Got it earlier than that deal came out. <laughs> it was three months break and I did 34 hours two weeks ago. AirPods are probably bad anyway, plus I got headphones and I don't like stuff in my ears. I guess some people don't like um, having ear f like earphones in their ears, like the in-ears. So they do prefer like over-ears. Like I, I love both, but I do like my in-ears as well. But I only like the over-ears when they have really good noise cancelling. You know, that's the thing. The more you buy, right, the more you upgrade your tech right like for example i used to be you know with the wired um in the -ear earphones you know the skull candies doka bob marley you know the marley's you know like all those like old school stuff then then i got to like um noise cancelling like um i got my first pairs of sennheisers noise cancelling over ears and those changed my perspective of like oh i need to s spend money on good audio and then it just goes on from there. I can't even use an earphone without noise cancelling now. It's like, it's that bad. I don't care how good the passive noise cancelling is. I need that white noise. I don't know why, but... <laughs> uh, it is lifestyle inflation at best. I'm up 20% Tesla carrying. I mean, to be fair, Tesla is doing well. But I'm just saying, like... <clears throat> Everyone's talking about Tesla, right? And the thing with Tesla is that it's still not cheap. I do not understand. I think what I think Tesla is doing is a dead cat bounce. That's what I think it is, guys. Um, don't hold me to it. I know it's up pretty much like 200%. I mean, 100%, right? So it's up double. But the prices just don't make sense, right? Like, the PE ratio is still high. It used to be in the thousands, right? It doesn't matter. It's still 49.5x. That's still quite a bit of a high PE ratio. The Ford PE ratio is no good either. Fair PE ratio 27.8x. And that's also pretty high. You know, let alone, that's like, it's pretty much double the fair PE ratio of what Simply Wall Street says. Not that I kind of, not that I really care much about these AI driven, you know, data driven, you know, whatever, analyst driven uh, PE ratios and what is fair and what is not fair. I don't care. But I still think it's overvalued, right? And of course, this AI thinks it's overvalued because the financials don't really make sense. So that's what I'm saying. Don't expect tesla to keep going up from here like i think 
people have become very hopeful in the past month or two because of a bit of a rebound we see in the market now this is <clears throat> where i tend to be quite um cautious you know there's a bit of fomo right like look why the stock market's fomo rally stalled out and what it what will decide its fate you know they always talk about fomo right this is the problem tesla doubling is the worst fomo people can get trapped into because what we call this is a bull trap if it's a bull trap you guys are screwed meaning tesla will continue to go down in the future and um it's <clears throat> it's gone ski that's it's yeah it's not a good sight really Cameron, I have a, I have a set, I have two sets of headphones with two sets of earphones, uh, earpods, uh, one good and one way better. Yeah, yeah, I guess I have one of each. I actually I don't have an over ear headphone anymore because it broke. But hmm, Ezra, going up in price makes you more of an audiophile. <laughs> yes, I I am kind of an audiophile. Not uh. Not really, I'm not like a serious one, but I have one Galaxy Buds 2, which is pretty good. Um, and I'm trying to buy the new Sony XM5 uh, noise cancelling headphones as well later. <sighs> Anyways, Taylor, real returns come from my ASX penny stocks. <laughs> I don't know if I should, um, you know, be happy with that, but you know, a win is a win. Profits are profits, so good job on there, Taylor, but don't get too hot hooked into penny stocks because it is it is quite dangerous right now to do short-term trading to be honest especially on bad companies like saying not saying all penny stock companies are bad but most of them are quite sketchy right and yeah you just gotta be careful a bit because you don't want to lose everything um in one go i don't know how you do penny stocks but yeah then again, I have a uh, three laptops for the uh, fourth gen Intel, uh, eighth gen, eleventh gen. Oh, damn, this guy's a tech nerd. Uh, Cameron, the tech nerd. I mean, I can't say much though. I mean, I have quite a setup myself, but I don't. I don't even use a laptop. I only use my work laptop and my gaming PC, pretty much. <clears throat> Not the XM5s, the 4s are the same. Nah, I think XM5 sounds much better. I like the design of the XM5s better. And I tried the XM5s and XM4s out. XM5 def definitely sounds a bit better. And and even taking calls, like like the mics on the XM5s are really good. So I think um, that's pretty worth it. Because I take a lot of calls when I have headphones on. So... Um, it's something that's really good because um, sometimes back when I used to Sennheisers they wouldn't be able to hear me so like it, it was quite a muffled audio quality from this the other side so yeah mics are really important for me as well so the XM5s are the best uh, no like XM4s are probably best value but if you don't care about that fifty hundred dollar difference i would take the xm5 for sure and because you know i guess i don't care if i use 50 or 100 bucks more on the headphone i'd rather spend that more for the quality and the features let's say <clears throat> sounds pretty bad compared to my macbook <laughs> uh, okay Taylor, I have to run, but PM if you want my DD on um, WBT. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, you can share that with me some other time. Uh, thanks for joining, man. Your entire setup is nothing compared to my desktop, to be honest. Bruh, don't be like that, bro. I mean, I don't have, I don't need much, right? I need one good gaming PC, um, two monitors, two 27-inch, one... 2.7k 14k monitor that's all i need right because i spend probably more money on investments in my cars rather but either way <laughs> yeah don't need more than one computer for me to be honest ryan just wondering why did you choose to study computer over software engineering 
why did I decide to study computer systems engineering? So the whole kind of the reason why I went to engineering. So for people, I, I think most people are regulars. So you guys would have would know that I went to uh, UOA, University of Auckland uh, Engineering School, and I did computer systems over software engineering because my initial goal in engineering was to get into electrical now because I was more of like an electronics guy back in like high school I used to do the robotics and you know electrical circuits PCBs you know um, low-level programming that, that was my vibe but more towards electronics and you know building electric circuits and stuff like that I love doing that kind of stuff and that was pretty much every that, that was me since like year 8 all the way to year 13 now going into university and trying out first year university I just saw electronics and electrical papers and I was just like oh this is not really for me I don't really like math anymore I guess I, I liked math to like stats and calculus those were like my best uh, subjects for sure but um, yeah it just really wasn't my vibe so I switched over then I was thinking should I get into coding because I've been coding since I was like 13 years old as well but I was like uh, like I kind of do want to keep that electrical electronics kind of basis in my studies like because I initially did come in to do electrical and electronics so I was like okay let's go straight into the middle and do computer systems and that's pretty much why I did computer systems there's not much to it I just didn't want to throw away the electronics electrical things I've done since like year eight but also I wanted to do a bit of coding so Comsys was a pretty good you know alternative for all these kind of options I had um, the only problem I have with the UOA computer systems um, curriculum is very obsolete so they teach a lot of things that's not really um, up to par with this um, industry to be honest and also computer systems job like actual proper computer system job don't really exist much in New Zealand it's very rare for you to get a proper Comsys job so um, most computer systems my um, like most of the most of my friends who did comps is they mostly moved into software side of things themselves so that's um how it went and for for myself i moved into the data industry which is very rare you don't see many people going from engineering into data but um it does happen especially nowadays because data is quite a hot topic and it's still got a really good uh, market demand for intermediate senior data um, specialists um it was a really good uh, move for me so you see a bit more people moving from software engineering backgrounds going into data as well not just software engineering or devops so yeah those are the kind of um reasons let's say Israel, they're so expensive how's the storm for you a uh, toy boy is smart boy <laughs> that is cringe the storm is okay um if i look outside um i mean the trees are moving a bit um give me a sec uh, let's see yeah the trees are moving a bit it's nothing too crazy to be honest um yeah i mean it's not in new zealand yet right so it's like i believe the cyclone is like oh gosh that was loud sorry um so i believe like the cyclone is like right above um new zealand if we bring this in here Ooh. this is the site i use to kind of look at these things but it's called earth null school so yeah it's pretty it's pretty nice um so yeah you can see that the eye is like right on top of cape ringa cape ringa ringa okay anyways yes you know the, the tip the top of the north island right so it's like kind of around that area so that area probably like windy as heck right now which is you know understandable but yeah I believe the cyclone's gonna be like just going like this, right? So it's supposed to kind of like go to the east side after, but it's not supposed to go straight through North Island anymore. And the the direction of the so like the path of the cyclone has changed a bit. It's apparently uh, downgraded from a uh, category three, I think. I'm not sure. So yeah, uh, I mean it's quite it's quite windy, but it's not too bad in East Auckland. Um, that's uh, where I live for a lot of you guys um, that um, probably already know by now. But yeah, 
Uh, it's not too bad. Um, tomorrow's the real deal, right? So tomorrow's supposed to be the worst out of the three days, Sunday to Tuesday. So we'll have to see because the cyclone will be a bit closer to Auckland uh, by tomorrow morning, afternoon. So, yeah, we'll definitely have a look to see what's going on. Uh, Leanne, good to have in the live stream. <clears throat> Cameron, uh, he wanted to put knives into plugs. What? Come on, man. Don't say things like that. Oh, I got cookery course and one of the kids don't know how to tell what boiling water is. Oh, okay. I won't say much. I mean, I wanted to make a joke, but that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> Didn't know what bubbling water means. Oh, gosh. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Cameron, every company he works for tends to have issues afterwards. What do you mean? Spark isn't having problems, are they? I'm not sure. I haven't been following, but Plexure's not having problems, right? Like, Plexure is actually doing pretty good. I think I like their, um, you know, Spark's been really good. Okay, let's look at my past companies, right? Okay, like, I don't know why you're giving me crap for, you know, companies that I worked for. Come on, man. Spark isn't doing too bad, is it? See, it's still up 19% here year on year which is good so see uh let's see so the p ratio is 24.3 which is good you can see that they're priced at five dollar 32 which is quite high actually um that's higher than what i expected it's quite stable it's a telecommunication company right so spark will be quite stable in terms of like um revenue growth and stuff like that these the these telecoms and utilities companies, they don't really grow really fast, like exponentially like these tech companies. So they're very stable and that's what makes them a really good dividend stock in the first place because of their consistency and track records. And, you know, right now people utilize internet, right? Even during the cyclone, right? We're stuck at home. What do you do? Go on the internet, watch Netflix, YouTube, use your phone, mobile data, whatever. Spark is making money regardless of what's happening, um, <clears throat> whether it's been bad weather or a pandemic, they always make pretty good money. So, uh, yeah, it's all right. They they do have a bit, they do have quite a bit of debt, but it's okay. Um, hmm. Dividend yield is five percent, which is not too bad. It's not the best, but especially in this climate, but um, it's not too bad. Ooh, okay. Quite even in terms of share, uh, shares bought and sold uh, by insiders. And yeah, I think Spark is doing still doing pretty good, right? Okay, let's have a look at Plexure. Oh, gosh. Okay, Plexure. Oh, it's not, pl oh, yes, it's not called Plexure anymore. Come on. Task. Okay. I think Plexure is doing pretty, like, it's, financials were pretty good. Simply Wall Street thinks it's worth 83%, but, I mean, 83 cents, but whatever. Mm. Yeah. We'll have to see. The um, free cash flow is kind of back up nearly, so that's pretty good. Yeah, equity growing, that's not much of a surprise. Just people buying. Scobby Ward is the uh, one of the top shareholders which been who has been holding Plexus stocks for quite some time. He just bought 1.8 mil more. He sees something, right? He's not even an... Is he an insider? I don't think he's an insider. He's just, uh, he was the number one uh, shareholder for quite some time, actually. Um, I think he's like some investor or whatnot. But yeah, he bought a bunch. I think Plexure's doing pretty good as well. So 
Honestly speaking, I think the companies I work for do pretty well after I leave, actually. I mean, it's only short term, right? But... <laughs> Cameron, we all outside your window. Do you see us? I'm waving. Cool story, bro. Nice, nice drive up in this weather to Auckland, is it? Oh yeah, interesting. Did you find uni difficult? No, uni wasn't really difficult. It was maybe stressful at times because I didn't really um, do my assignments in time. So, you know, I always used to push things back and just focus more on my tut tutoring. So I did private tutoring for like NCN, and Cambridge Math and Sciences. Um, I had a lot of students back in uni because I used to, at my peak, I used to teach like six to eight students per week so sometimes i would miss out on lectures to go to teach go to private tutoring uh my private uh tutors um yeah so i mean i didn't and i was just busy you know screwing around not really focusing much i think i lost passion for like solve like computer systems engineering like from my third fourth especially in my fourth year i just lost it i didn't i didn't really care about my degree because i know i won't fail it but i didn't want to spend too much time in it and because i didn't like it that's why i i didn't even like coding like by then like i think coding was getting quite boring for me i was like i want to try something a bit different and that's when i started to look towards data right and that's where the data boom kind of hit for me and i was like do I really want to take a salary, you know, a salary uh, drop? Like, because my first job only paid me 43000 So that's really low for any engineering grad. I don't think I know anyone that started below my wages um, straight out of uni, right? But I took a gamble. I was like, okay, I need to learn this data. But I don't have any background knowledge about data. I only know software and computer systems kind of background, electronics background and stuff. So they're like, okay, we'll take a gamble on you, but we'll have to pay you like really bad salary. I was like, okay, whatever. I took it and that just worked out for me. But it is quite it is quite a ride, Ariane. It is quite a ride. But uni was not difficult. It was I only made it difficult for myself because I keep pushing away my assignments and I didn't study for my exams much either. I always played League of Legends or something like that. I hope no one from my you. <laughs> I hope none of my professors are watching this live stream. Highly not, but highly likely not. But yeah, <laughs> it is quite funny. Hey Joshua, good to have in the live stream. Um, yeah, I hope you're faring well in this uh, cyclone weather. It's getting a bit bad, but it's okay. Ezra, I might get a tat next year. Good luck to you, mate. Um, nothing against tats, but yeah. Um, make sure you think about it because it's not very fun removing it uh, later, it seems. Well, yeah, work has been pretty chill today since most of my flights were cancelled. Yeah, yeah, I don't think anyone would want to be flying in this kind of weather. It's actually very rubbish. Uh, but yeah. Hope everything is well for everyone. Ezra. I don't understand why Choi Boy always leaves a company and he'll eventually buy the home in his current barbecue. I mean, I leave a company and I go to somewhere that fits me better, gives me better work and gives me better pay. That's really, I care. Well, that's all I care about, right? I move companies if they bore me out, don't give me what I want or don't pay me what I want. It's, it's pretty simple. And this company where I'm right now... Um, I mean, if you looked at my LinkedIn, I mean, you'll see everything, but yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, actually, give me a sec. I think a lot of you, if you guys want to add me on LinkedIn, if you have LinkedIn, just let me know. Um, then yeah, we can talk about it. But yeah, my LinkedIn is pretty, pretty nice, I guess, kind of. Yeah, this is my LinkedIn, right? So, Jack Choi. Senior data consultant at Altus Consulting. It's public. It's public information, so I don't mind. But yeah, if you have LinkedIn, just give me, find me, you know, and find this photo, and add me on LinkedIn, guys. It's, it's the deal. But man, it is quite an experience, right? Like quite a nice little experience. Starting from Westpac internship, iBuys, Plexure, Trade Me, back to Plexure then to Spark, then Altus Consulting, right? But it's always for better pay, better work, 
better environment, work environment, and that's all that me, all that I need, and also, also, you know, progression. If I was moving around at the same level, like still like junior, intermediate, data engineer, then that that'd be a red flag, right? But there was always a good reason because I always wanted to upskill on new things and upgrade on my kind of title and also work work at a higher level take more take on more responsibilities and stuff like that and uh, it's just what i like doing but yeah good old fun really good old fun <laughs> i hope your students did well my students did pretty well so i think a lot of the so there was two types of students right so half of my students back when i was a private tutor they were quite low grade so they got like maybe 40 to 60 percent average for their math and sciences and <clears throat> i brought a lot of them up to at least the um, 80s i think one of them hit 90s and he no, he did really well. So, um, yeah, he went to Archie, uh, architecture in your way for what I know. So he was my first student. He was good. Um, yeah, I don't think any of my students, like, I, I, I don't think I ever failed to improve on my students' grades, which is fortunate enough because I know there's a lot of students that won't really put in the effort even if they get tutoring right and they're probably doing it just because their parents are forcing them to that would be the worst kind of things but yeah <clears throat> okay cameron kiwi investments just sold all their stake shares i don't i think um that's that's a sign right you know shares these you know increasing their fees and you know people selling out their shares and stake shares whatever and all these kind of investment firms like breaking down even local bitcoins for people in crypto local bitcoins apparently shut down for what i know i don't know like i haven't like i haven't really confirmed but yeah i don't know it's not really a good the bear markets are not really the best times to you know endure as a business um as an exchange business especially so um yeah it is hard times for a lot of these exchanges but it kind of shows you the difference of what the retail investors think about the stock market right now versus what the business owners and the exchange level people think how the market is going if the overall volume of um trades are low that's a pretty good sign of a bear market but also an increasing for a stock as well right if you see the price dropping and the volume increasing then that normally means that's quite a bearish kind of trend so you know all these kind of things really make um really make a very big difference Ezra, bro, this kid I've known for four years play Leagues of Legends all holidays. <laughs> oh, come on, man. I mean, that's what students do, right? Hey, Tim, good to have you in the live stream. Hope you're being well. And if you're in Auckland, um, damn, hope you're staying safe. It's not, not the nicest weather, but it's okay. Nutmeg, good to have you in the live stream as well. I think that's mixed emotions, um, if I'm not wrong. Yo, have you got a house yet? No, I'm not buying a house anytime this year. Um... I am still saving up more deposit. I probably want a lot more than 20% in terms of like, I don't want to be like, you know, I, I had a thought, right? I don't even know if I should be buying a house like anytime soon. Well, I think I will wait until mid next year, just because in terms of cash, uh, like cash position, like in the bank, I want to have enough where, let's say I'm using 160k uh, for a house deposit for a, I don't know, 800k house, okay? Fair enough in Auckland. Um, then if I'm using 160, uh, let's say out of that, 120 comes out of my bank account and 40k comes from my KiwiSaver. Um, I'm, I'm roughly estimating my KiwiSaver to be around 40, 50,000 by the time I buy my house uh, sometime next year. Then if that is going to be the case... And let's say I only saved up 120, then, man, 
I I have nothing left after the house deposit, and that's not a position I want to be in. So I want to just save a lot more, right? I'm gonna save a lot more than like if I need one twenty, if I need one twenty for the house deposit from my bank account, I want at least like one sixty two hundred in my bank. It's just so I have some leeway and some emergency funds and all that kind of thing, all that kind of thing sorted. So I don't really topple over when things go sour. And also the interest rates are not really in my favor. Plus, I don't think the house prices um, are going to slow down to fall anytime soon. I think there is a kind of miss hope that people might have in terms of the house housing market. I was like, can't fall further than this. It's already down like 15, 20%. I think it possibly can. Not that I'm trying to time the market, it's more about me and my financial position. I just want more cash in the bank before I, you know, buy the house. But not. But on top of that, I don't think it's a really nice time for me to buy a house or for most people to buy, for, for most people to buy the house. Of course, this is not financial advice. So if, you, if you're buying a house right now, don't listen to me. Of course, do your own due diligence. I, this is just my opinion. I don't think it's a great time to buy a house, um, personally. So, unless you have a really good deal on a house, um, I don't think the house prices are still in my favor. And also, I don't think interest rates are going to go down any time this year. And for that reason, um, I kind of want to buy it when the house prices dip a bit and consolidate a bit. And by the time the house prices consolidate going sideways, you know, a big dip and sideways, right? And during this phase, I want the interest rates to kind of dip down. And that's when I would like to buy. Like, that's the kind of trends I'd be looking for. Because I'm not really rushing in to buy a house, right? I don't have a reason to buy a house um, anytime soon. So, you know. And buying it by myself is already quite a stretch, right? Like, I don't need to do that. But I'm just doing it just because I can. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of things to think about. I'm always changing. I'm trying my best to stay flexible, as flexible as possible when it comes to a house because it is a big purchase and of course, um, one bad move can really um, hinder your financial position. So um, I don't want to be too hasty about it. And But the, at the same time, I don't want to time the market too much. But yeah, just personally, I'm not really, I'm not really ready to buy a house by myself. Um, if I was married right now, it with my current financial position, I would definitely buy a house. But at the same time, as I mentioned, then there's the second problem, right? The finance, the housing market. I don't think it's like a nice time. So, yeah, I think that's kind of where I stand. So, um, yeah. The house might come a lot later and maybe I'll put it on this YouTube channel. Maybe I won't. I'm not sure. I don't even know if I should be telling people where I live, but I'll kind of share that journey with you guys on this YouTube channel in the future if I ever do buy a house. But don't don't expect anything this year. Uh, and if it's next year, it will be at least mid late next year or it even could be um, the year after that, which would be 2025. So yeah, not a rush. Um, it's not the best. The flooding in Auckland will increase premiums, and also it will probably, um, you know, it will probably um, require the interest rates to stay up longer because you know all these expenses and um, support going out to Auckland um, homes, and you know there's a lot of things going on, right? There's a lot of money to be spent in New Zealand right now, and interest rates just won't dip um, for 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 longer because of this flooding and all this cyclone thing and we don't know even we don't even know the impact of the cyclone in, at the moment right it's happening right now so um, I'm just not sure um, how the economy will recover in the next year or two depending on these big events we have going on right now um, weather wise as well Okay, <clears throat> I might head off at 8.30. I think we have more than 10 people. And I think if I start to pick a stock, I will have more people join in during the time. So I will kick off the um, pick a stock. So let me just get through the chat real quick. Then we'll start off the um, pick a stock. Okay, so I'll change it. So uh, starting pick a stock uh, thingy at... What time? 8.20. Let's start at 8.20, okay? 
Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Alright. There we go. It's here now. Um, did I spell that wrong? I did. No, it's just a colon. Okay. There we go. Starting pick a stock at 820. So if you guys are here for the um, pick a stock, it's starting at 820. Um, it'll start in this chat and I'll send out uh, Google uh, Google polls and stuff like that because YouTube polls are not very flexible. I can't really um, do much with it. So um, last time I worked with Google Sheets and stuff like that, and it worked pretty well for me. So um, yeah, we'll do that. But before that, I'll just go through the chat real quick. Um, so. He hasn't renamed the channel to Till Seven Acres. I won't. I'll probably never own Seven Acres, but I'll see where what I can do in the future. Ezra, uh, actually, I might head off now. I want to try get some more hours of sleep. All good, man. Uh, thanks for joining in. I'll um, and stay safe. Cameron, don't leave. Your Mac is okay. Don't go and cry in your room with your lights off. <laughs> Cameron, that's so savage. Nutmeg plays. Uh, yeah, I keep forgetting you want a house in Auckland. Yes, that's the thing, right? Auckland prices is a bit higher, so it's not like Christchurch, right? So if I, if it was in Christchurch, there's a lot of new builds that are for pretty nice prices, actually. I mean, well, compared to Auckland, at least. So yeah, I would have bought one, but yeah, in Auckland, it'll yeah, it'll take me a bit. But even then, I just I'm just not in a rush. I don't like the housing price. Um, at the moment still and even the interest rates are still probably going to go up um it's going to go up till uh, mid this year at the least right so it, the reserve bank literally said oh the interest rates will increase the ocr will increase till mid this year and it'll peak at 5.5 um that's pretty much saying they want to induce a um recession and the interest rates will have to come up because the ocr is going up and we don't know how long that's going to stay up there for or how fast it's going to come back down but i don't think they'll be able to lower the uh, interest rates anytime soon after they peak in mid late this year maybe they'll start going down from like next year but i don't think they'll be too hasty about it because they have a lot of money that have that have they have lost due to pandemics and you know these uh flooding and cyclone um events um yeah yet to be known in terms of impact disclaimer I'll show you the disclaimer, okay? So this is what my moderator Cameron made for me a long time ago, but this is the disclaimer. Whatever I say is not financial advice, okay? And even pick a stock, guys. If you pick a stock for me, it is not financial advice. Please do your own due diligence and take it with a grain of salt because I'm doing this mostly for entertainment because people just because some people are like oh people have voted for this stock to be chosen for till certain figures that is not a signal for you to go and buy the stock yourself please do your own research and be reasonable and be realistic guys okay it's all entertainment if everyone could choose the best stocks everyone would be rich but the majority of investors do not make money off the stock market or investing in general because they don't know how to invest and also they do not research and so on and so on. It's not an easy game. So, you know, <coughs> just keep that in mind, guys. So thank you for the disclaimer once again, Cameron. Tim, smart move to, uh, to wait till interest rates become more favorable. Yeah, but the thing is this, I still stand in the same, I still stand by the fact that I would rather buy a house that is at a higher price. No, 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 no. Okay, <laughs> other way around. I'd rather buy a house that is lower in price and higher in interest rate rather than the vice versa. Higher price and lower interest rates. Because you can always refinance the interest rates um, as time goes. But once you lock in that property price, that is what you're going to pay. So that is probably the worst thing you can do is buy a house for like like more than a million when you can afford it. You're already tight on your budget and you only got in because the interest rates are like, what, 2.5%. But look what's happening. People who have fixed their mortgages at like 2.5 to like 4%, they'll be rolling off soon. I know a few people around me rolling off their fixed interest rates at like 3%. They're now going to be hit with like 5, 6, like even maybe 7% interest rates. 
if that is the case, then this group, if they were already tight on the um, financials with the current 3%, they won't be able to service um, sustain, sustain, uh, sustain, what is wrong with my pronunciation? Sustainably, yes, yeah, sustainably be able to service the mortgage. So, um, it is something to be aware of. I would never buy a house at low interest rates when the prices are high, but when it's low prices and low interest rate, they, that, that normally does not happen. It just doesn't work like that. But if that, that if that happens, that's a bargain. <laughs> Pretty much. Cameron, the woman he would be in a relationship with could also quite possibly be married to. <clears throat> it's okay, we'll find out. Don't need to worry about that. We do some CSI stuff to figure out where you live. You know, we'll backtrace your IP or something. Oh, don't be like that, man. Guys, you go use a VPN, guys. Don't let these guys like Cameron backtrace you. I mean, I don't really care if people, like, know where I live, but I'd rather not say it on the internet for very good reasons, but, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Okay. Pick a stock time. All right, pick a stock. It's 8.20, guys. Um, So let me show you, first of all, what happened, okay? I need to show you guys... How serious we're about this pick a stock. Guys, pick a stock till seven figures. So I started this content back in September. And you know last year wasn't the best year for my YouTube channel. I didn't have much activity going on in this YouTube channel uh, last year. So, um, yeah. And that's why I didn't do too many uh, pick a stocks last year. But I'm hopefully um, planning to do it at least every two, three months this time, hopefully. So uh, keep tuned for that. But we started off with A2 Milk, Oceania Healthcare, Main Freight, and Briscoe's. Remember, you cannot pick the stock that already ca uh, that is already in this list. So if you want to pick a stock, you need to recommend something that is not in this list. It must have it must be listed on the nzx okay so these are the rules okay the rules rules okay rules okay let's uh merge cells um what is it bold it uh make it big oh boy yeah okay uh 24 okay rules Okay, so number one, it is uh, pick a stock in listed, which is listed in NZX. Okay, it needs to be in the New Zealand exchange. Ah, control plus, sorry. Yes, give me a second, guys. Uh, let's do that. Okay. A bit better, a bit better. Okay, give me a sec. Let me do it one more time. 200. Oh, yes. Much better. Okay. So pick a stock. Um, nothing below $10 million market cap. Uh, in New Zealand, there's not many companies that's under okay, $20 million market cap. Um, you should be... Helping me make money in these stocks. <laughs> yes, you should be picking stocks for me that way I can actually make a profit. Because if you do, if the above criteria, if the stock makes money, I might do a sh share these gift code giveaway. Oh, damn. See, I'm such a nice person. Um, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to merge that. Uh, 
Ah, yes. What is going on? Okay. Okay, there we go. See, it's not it's not rocket science, is it guys? Okay, I didn't say start, okay? <laughs> we don't even have that many people. It's like everyone's gone now. Oh gosh. Okay, uh pick a stock. I don't know how well this is gonna go. We don't have enough people, but pick a stock for me. Okay. Oh, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay. I don't even know if Joshua is still here, right? <laughs> he might have been bored out. Uh, I recommend Manawa Energy. Oh, Manawa Energy. He promised Korean barbecue and we're still waiting. Oh, come on. I didn't promise you guys anything. I cannot trust. I cannot buy people. Ugh, my viewers, Korean barbecue. I don't, I don't understand how you guys are going on with this for like more than two years. Been in since uh, December bottom. Good dividend too. I mean, it could be Manawa. Who knows? But... Okay, guys, okay, I'm gonna go through the rules real quick. So you need to pick a stock for me that is listed in the NZX. That's one thing. It, nothing should be, it, it should not have a market cap below $20 million. If it's below $20 million, it's a penny stock. It's just, it's not good, okay? So let's make it that we cannot pick stocks under 20 mil. I don't even know if there's many under 20 mil, but just to keep away from those uh, penny stocks, okay? Uh, you should be helping me make money in these stocks. You're not supposed to like ruin my things. And if I do make money on a stock, I might be nice enough to do a Shazzy's gift uh, gift code uh, giveaway, which I've done a few in the past. So those are the rules pretty much. Okay, so just to go recap, A2 Milk is the only pick a stock that actually made me a profit. That's amazing, right? Then Oceania Healthcare, we didn't go in the right time, really. And we went into the worst time of Oceania Healthcare and we did a 15.47% uh, in the negative. And Oceania did even worse after we sold out back one year ago in February 2022. Uh, Main Freight didn't do too bad, but it just was, it was screwed by the market, right? So um, that happened there. And also... <clears throat> what is this? Why is this not a dollar? Oh gosh. See, so I reinvest anything I made from the previous company and I put it into the new stock. So that's how it goes with these um, picker stocks. So uh, guys, I didn't say start yet, so give me a sec. So just explaining. So, main freight. Did 2.75% in the negative. Briscoe's, okay, this is the one that we I just sold, right? And Briscoe's didn't do well. I reinvested all the dividends I got from Briscoe's and I still ended up with negative 16.3%, which is pretty quite up there with Oceania Healthcare as the worst. So we thought Briscoe's would be, you know, safe because it was a dividend stock, but it just couldn't outdo the market right the market was going down and briscoe's was also affected i didn't really look into briscoe's much but i don't know what happened to them but that is quite a big tank for a dividend stock even but for example spark did pretty good right so i mean i don't know uh but of course briscoe's does have a bit more fluctuation compared to these utilities and telecommunication companies so yeah Okay, the fifth one is what we're going to be uh, looking into today. And we're going to buy that on mm, 13th, okay? 13th, 02, 2023, okay? And sold, but not sure. But what we're going to do is um, we're always going to pull in the amount that uh, we have made 
what well, what we have left after we sell off the previous company and the pre pre previous stock was Briscoe's at eighty one forty guys. Come on, we can do better than that. We can do better than negative sixteen point three percent. Okay, so be serious, guys. Give me a nice stock to buy and reinvest this eighty one point forty dollars into a new stock. If I do make a percentage difference, uh, if I make a positive percentage gain on this stock, I will do a gift away, uh, a, um, a code gift away. What? Gift away? No, giveaway. Sorry. A Sharesy's uh, gift code uh, giveaway. So that is the plan. So we'll be reinvesting the dollars. I think I still have this in my wallet, right? So you can see that I have 81.40. Um, this is from selling Briscoes and it's just sitting there. So we'll be doing that. Okay. So that is the plan. Okay. Um, let me set up the, um, what do you call it? The poll because the YouTube poll doesn't let me put a lot of options. Okay. So I need to put the initial stocks into this kind of, what do you call it? Forms, let's say. Um, okay, give me one second guys, so, get link, ah, oh, yep, all right, where is oh yeah copy okay okay are you guys ready okay when i say start Put in the ticker three letter code or the company name of the stock you would like to vote for. Put forward. Okay, guys, ready, ready. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to be putting these options into a Google form, okay? And I'm gonna uh, put it out. And then, um, yeah, we'll go from there. And the final the final vote we'll be able to do on YouTube polls because YouTube polls then lets me take in, you know, it lets me, you know, put a poll up with less options. Because I know when you guys recommend me the first docs, it really does kind of, um, <clears throat> I struggle because I can't put many options in the poll for YouTube. So, okay. I didn't say start yet, but, um, okay. Put in your, um, ticker company names now. Okay. Start one company each no cheating okay go into the chat guys right now <clears throat> put in the ticker of what you want me to buy okay so <clears throat> I'll, I'll count the ones Leanne and Tim so don't worry about it I'll count you guys in if you guys didn't put it after the chat after the messages of, of my chat then it doesn't count, okay? It has to be after. So it'll start from Leanne's one down to Tim's, okay? Um, down and it will continue go. So we will do this until 8.40, okay? 8.40 will give people some time to put into the chat the ticker. So, okay, we got FSF, okay? Um, I need to... <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember some of these. Okay, ah, Fonterra Shareholders Fund. Okay, we got... Okay, let me bring this in here. Um, actually, yeah. So we got this. Okay. 
We got Fonters FSF. Okay. We got Mana. Oh, Mana. Wah. Okay. We got. What is this? Um. I'll put the whole kind of name into the Google Forms as well. So, um, once the um, once all the kind of candidates are in, I'll send out a link on the chat for people to vote, and we'll do the um, final voting in YouTube itself because the voting thing works fine there for like three options or something like that. So, we'll do the initial one here. Um, so it's Manawa Energy, okay. Then we got Mel. <laughs> uh, we got Mel, okay. Give me a sec. Mel? What is Mel? Give me a sec. Ah, yes, it is Meridian. I was like, where's Meridian? I can't see it, okay. The Meridian Energy, okay. Uh, we got Meridian Energy, which is Mel. Okay, what else do we have, guys? Put in your stocks, man. I have 16 viewers, but where are all these stocks? <laughs> Chuck in your companies in the chat now. Put it in now, please. Okay, we got another Manawa. So, if it's already in there, I'll keep it in here. I mean, you just got, you guys just gotta uh, choose one, I guess. Hey, Smee, good to have in the live stream. Hey, man, waiting for this and glad I caught you. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Uh, lithium. I okay. Remember the rules are that it needs to be a New Zealand company stock. Okay, so it needs to be ex it needs to be available on NZX. Um, and yeah. I don't know what is lithium. I don't even. I don't even think we have something to do with lithium in New Zealand. No. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Um. I can't do. I can't do. Wait. What is this? Pilbara. Okay. No, I can't do ASX. So this is this is the thing, right? I can't do ASX. FSF, okay. I have to get up at 4.30, so I'll be leaving soon. Sorry, it's all good. Uh, we got MFB. MFB, which is my food bag. <laughs> Are you guys making me buy my food bag? It's been dipping for ages. Guys, save me, please. <laughs> Are you sure this is gonna go up in the next months? Oh gosh, alright, so this is back in my food bag. <clears throat> IFT, so we got Infratil, okay. Infratil, Infratil, Infratil. IFT, I believe. That is right. If I'm not wrong, yep, Infratil. It's a classic infrastructure company. That's fine. Um, what else do we have? We have, it's ASX. Sorry, no, it's all gets me. Uh, take your time and put in the stock that you'd like to vote for in quick, uh, before eight forty. So that is the cutoff. Uh, we got Ethan Blade. Good to have in the live stream, and you put Spy. Ah, smart pay holdings. Okay, we'll put that in. Oh, it's been going on a bit of a crazy bull run by itself, despite the market. So it's been doing really well. Okay, all right, I'll put that. Uh, smart pay. So that is SPY. <clears throat> okay, we got air. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know if you guys been following my channel for quite some time you guys know how much I love Air New Zealand no I don't really like Air New Zealand as a stock I like Air New Zealand as a company but yeah as a stock it's been pretty average like it's not the best financials in my opinion but uh, we'll you know we'll take that really um, yeah NZX, uh, okay, yeah, we're fine, we're fine, okay, 
<clears throat> my food yuck. Ooh. Ooh. Are you going to take that? Who put MFB? Okay. TT, are you going to take that, bro? Tim says my food back yuck. <laughs> okay, these are the options we have right now. He loves kind of south too. Yeah, I love kind of south, bro. I love them green companies, bro. No, I'm joking. I don't. But yeah. <laughs> okay, Smee, where are you? Are you even here? Okay, we got two more minutes, guys. Two more minutes to put in the stock, and we'll. I will put the link. To this Google Forms and we will choose like the top three and we'll do a um, we'll do a final here oh no top three no there's there's not enough people do the top three we'll do top two we'll do top two from this and we'll do a revote on YouTube polls uh, it'll show up on your chat and uh, we'll do a redo, redo there and we'll choose that final stock um, that people want. Air is definition of consolidation. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Yes. What is in what is Air New Zealand doing? What is it doing? I haven't checked them for a long time. Oh, it's been creeping up though far. Yeah, I guess so. That is quite a good consolidation does. Um I'm I'm quite surprised it didn't dip down any further, but yeah, I th believe the share purchase plan happened around here. The rights, the rights offer happened around here, around fifty cents or so. So that's a pretty good hustle, to be honest. But we don't know how much further, or how much longer it'll take for Air New Zealand to really, you know, get back to these dollar eighty two dollar ranges. Right, it takes a long time. Um, especially for these kind of air like airline companies these traditional companies cannot scale their business fast enough they cannot and they're too in the they're too dependent on the weathers and the global events and you know travel is very volatile business um yeah so air new zealand might be doing well in the future but it will take a bit of time for their financials to get better I don't think Smee's here anymore, so, um, okay, <laughs> uh, it's all good then, Air is definition of O2, bruh, Air isn't a bad company to work for, yeah, so as a company, I don't mind, but as a stock, yeah, I really don't know. Uh, free standby flights uh, for family members if you need to travel urgently. Oh, that's pretty nice. Ah, we got Dakota. We got E-Road, I believe that is. Um, and I think that is it. I think that is it, guys. Okay, we got E-Road. E-Road. Okay, that's it. Okay, first phase done, guys. First phase done. Okay. I'm going to send this out, okay? So I'm going to send this out. Copy, cancel. Um, choose the stock. Okay. I don't even know if we have enough people to um to do this but are we even gonna get the top two i'm not even sure but it's okay okay i'm only six percent up on air but then they are starting to explore electric options i hope they save a bit of fuel money and make bigger profits remember Airlines do not make big money off the flights themselves. It's everything around it. Okay, it's about how, you know, if you look at the business models of like, you know, I don't know, like these Emirates or like these big airline companies, you would know. You would know. Okay, guys, go click the forms link in the chat. If you go into the chat, it will show you a form. Please choose a stock that you would like to push 
to the finals, okay? We need to come with the top two. Top two. Make it easy, guys. We don't. I don't even know if we have enough people, but we'll make it work somehow. So we got... What's happening? We got two Air New Zealand, one Infratil, and one Manawa Energy. So we got Air New Zealand <laughs> and the lead at the moment guys go into the uh, go into the forms link in below we only have four responses we don't even have enough people today normally i have around 20 30 people in these picker stocks but today i only have like 12 viewers so i'm not sure how many responses i'll get but hopefully enough to get the top two but the link is in the chat uh, go cl click that forms link and it'll show you the google forms and you can choose the stock you would like to see in the final vote for the pick a stock episode five so um the previous company uh for people who are joining in just now the previous company we had was briscoe's and it was a big failure at negative 16.3 percent which is not a really good return for a lot of you guys who know math the negative sign is never really a good sign so people were choosing a new zealand stock that they would like me to buy with this $81.40 that I made from Briscoe's. Well, minus the profit, <laughs> minus the loss, I guess. We don't have many responses, so we got a lot of quiet people here. It might be a standoff from these three, right? Oh gosh. Oh gosh, we got a three-way tie and we don't even have enough people. Normally there should be one more one in front of the six, right? We only have six responses. It's, it's a poor day today. Everyone's quite busy with the cyclone, maybe. I'm not sure, but... <sighs> Is today the right day to do this? I'm not sure, but uh, we will carry on with it either way. They literally uh, flew some dude to Fiji alone. What? <laughs> it's a nightmare to fly in this weather, bro. I, I get it. Okay, we got a three-way. Okay, is there no more? Is there really no more responses? Come on, we need more than that. <laughs> Tim, Briscoes won't do well till the economy picks up again. I guess so. I mean, I guess com Briscoe's not really a consumer staple because people don't really go to Briscoe's to buy regularly. I don't know. It's quite a seasonal thing, but also I guess the economy, uh, like com like supermarkets would do much better than companies like um, Briscoe's, I guess. But yeah. It seems like we have a three-way, um, a three-way, guys. If we have a three-way, then we'll, we'll we'll bring all the three stocks and we'll do it in the YouTube poll. Okay, we'll give it one more time. We'll give it just another minute. We don't have many viewers on here, so I think this is pretty much it for the Google Forms. Okay. We'll wait one more minute, okay? We got 30 seconds left. And while that happens, I don't think it's going to change much from here. So pick a stock. Stock for T7. Um, Feb 2023. Um, add an option. We'll have in New Zealand. We'll have inf oh yes, yeah, that's infratil. Okay, infratil, and we got Manawa Energy Limited. Okay, yeah, today wasn't the best day to live stream, but I don't have anything much better to do. So, oh well, that's okay. Okay. I thought people would be chilling at home, but I guess not. <laughs> oh boy. I might do some gaming live streams after this one. I need a game a bit. I'm. I, oh well. Okay, 
we'll keep it here because it's not changing here. I don't think people are joining the um, what do you call it? Stop. So I will create a poll on the YouTube chat poll thing, and if it pops up, choose the stock you'd like me to buy. Okay, uh, we won't waste too much more time. Um, we'll do it from here. So. Still pays a dividend, so it's down. I'm still adding to my position. Briscoe's is not a bad long term, in my opinion, but it, it is quite high in terms of um, market value, so I'm not quite sure. But it's pretty good weather down south, sky clear today. I guess it is pretty much just Auckland because, yeah, it's definitely not good. It's already quite dark, and it, you know what? The weather's good, right? It's just windy, but the weather's good. It's not raining. It, the, the sky is clear right now outside in Auckland as well. It's just windy, that's all. That is just windy. Really, really windy. Anyways. Everyone busy sandbagging. I think the land on our side is quite high. So, um, luckily we don't have any flooding issues or none of that in East Auckland, I think. So... Yeah, thankfully. I'm just worried about the cyclone blowing our roof off. So, um, yeah, let's hope that, that doesn't happen. So, I will put the poll up now. Okay, pick a stock. Come on, guys. Let's go. All right, pick a, pick a stock. Come on. It's Air New Zealand, Infratil, and Manawai Energy. you got three options. Choose the one you would like me to buy for the next pick a stock okay we'll look at each one so we got Air New Zealand okay which has been recovering kind of bit uh, just a bit this year so it's been doing okay and it's just consolidating uh, since like November so not much change here but there was a bit of an increase in the last half of last year after their um, rights offer so that's Air New Zealand, we got Infratil, I actually haven't looked into them for quite some time, so we'll do a quick look, and Infratil has, is an infrastructure company that buys other infrastructure companies pretty much, but um, they had a bit of a growth, you know, um, in the past months, but they, they had a quite a big drop um, here, not a huge drop, but just a bit of a drop in September or Oh, sorry, uh, all the way to October, but nothing significant. So, you know, it's quite stable and infertile as well. We got Manawa Energy, which is the last one, okay? So, Manawa Energy has been doing pretty well since December. So, it's been retracting a bit from the bottom. So, it's been doing good, doing good from December onwards. But, yeah, so those are the three options, guys. Um... We got nine votes in right now for um, the voting thing, and we have Infratil in the lead right now. Infratil is um, quite a interesting company. It'll be nice um, to we got a bit of a transaction fee going on there as well. Uh, for all of you who are not aware, Shazies did increase their uh, transaction fee, so it is going to be quite it's going to be quite expensive. So we need to be more careful when we buy and sell stocks now because the fees are slightly higher either way infertile does pay a bit of a dividend i'm um, not nothing crazy 2.9 percent is pretty crap for a dividend yield but um luckily infertile does have a bit more growth um capital wise compared to other companies like 2018 they were worth three bucks and it's worth nine bucks so you know if you kept this stock since 2018 so it's five years five years you would have tripled your money and if you kept what do you call it dollar cost averaging especially during these times like uh, when the pandemic first started back in 2020 uh march if you started like dollar cost averaging you know since 2018 you'd be quite rich right now you'd have at least quadrupled to like maybe six times your money right now if you did dollar cost average so it's pretty good pretty good indeed Okay, we got nine votes, and um, I don't think I'm getting any more than that. So, yeah. Cameron, it's raining in Topo. Uh, yeah. 
It's not raining here, luckily. Uh, Lian, I got up at 5.30 a.m. today, went to work and fluffed around at home. Got to do last shift uh, for the cycle tomorrow. Hope um, the weather's not too bad in South Island tomorrow. I think a thouse would be pretty fine. It's just the North Island that is screwed. And just before we end the in the poll um if you haven't liked this live stream give it a like guys don't expect too much from you guys um watching my content is good enough but it does pay a bit more um f for my channel algorithm if you hit that like button so smash it up and we will end this poll uh pretty much now i don't think we are getting any much more uh we don't have that many people watching and um for people who have joined just now if you haven't um been following it's pick a stock for me so if you have the time you should see a poll uh up with air new zealand infratil and manawa energy on the um side there if you like any of these companies that you'd like me to buy uh give it a vote if that's not the case i will close it at 8 50 four yeah cameron you're right it was not a good day to live stream but i'm not around next week sunday so i can't do a live stream then um yeah not sure um i might do a poll after like i don't know what the what days would be the best times to like do a live stream i really kind of want to do it on mondays but yeah sunday's a bit weird sometimes Cameron, you do remember where she lives, where, uh, uh, where what air traffic she controls, right? I don't remember, actually. Uh... No, I do not remember. Right now. <laughs> uh, see you, Leanne. Thanks for joining in. Uh... Okay. I'm going to end this poll. I think that's pretty much it. It's quite a quiet chat today. It's definitely not the best day. Okay, the poll. Infratil won by 44%. Air New Zealand 33%. Manawa Energy at 22%. So we pretty much had... What? How many votes? So 5, 2, no. 4, 3, 2? Yeah, 432. We had four on Infratil, three people on Air New Zealand, and two people on Manawa Energy. So, Infratil wins, okay? Infratil wins the pick a stock. So, we will buy Infratil today. Damn, this hurts me every time. Negative $10,000 on my high risk portfolio. How nice. Whoa. Whoa. Wait, guys. Whoa. Where's all my money gone? Wait, wait. It, wait, guys. Am I tripping? Hang on while well, invest my money in a IFT. Thanks for the solid financial advice, guys. You guys are crazy. I told you not to. <laughs> Oh man, okay. Firstly, I'll buy Infratil with market rate um, and we'll put 81.4 in there and we will do a. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so that's it. Ah, there we go. I don't know why I only see Raycon just then, but it scared me. I was like, bro, my value is here, but what happened to my Blackberry and Task? <laughs> ah, yes, it bugged out. Yes, it freaked me out. I was like, what the heck is going on? Okay, so we finally got Infratil. So we got Infratil here. Infratil, and we bought it, and we're going to buy it tomorrow, so that's good. And... Hopefully this one will give us a green light. If it does a give, if it does give a green light, we'll do a giveaway, uh, just a small giveaway for you guys to, um, you know, enjoy the raffle. Let's say. Okay, I think the chat's really, 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 really quiet today, so I'm gonna end it 
uh, pretty much here today. So thanks for joining in today, guys. Um, we'll keep a track of what Infratil does in the near future. Hope it does go up in value. It's been doing pretty all right, just consolidating, nothing too crazy, but yeah. Tommy, good to have you in the live stream. OCA green for sure. Ooh, OCA. OCA hasn't been doing too great, but yeah, I don't know. Like, um, the retirement village sector does, it is quite coupled with, what do you call it? It is quite coupled with um, the housing market. So as long as the housing market does not improve, I don't think uh, retirement villages would be a really good option, to be honest. But, you know, because, you know, if you look at the assets and, you know, how much, how they make money, you know, a lot of their money is in land and property, right? So it's just a bit of a hassle there. Okay, thanks for joining in today's guys. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up or put a comment down below on any of my videos and I will reply to them as time goes. Um, normally I give you a nice little paragraph, but other than that, uh, we will end it here today. Uh, quite a quiet day. I hope everyone stays safe uh, from the cyclone. It is going to be a bit more, you're going to feel it more if you live in Auckland or Northland or like... I don't know, like Coromandel, um, Napier, Gisborne, you know, that kind of area. So in the east coast. So do uh, keep safe if you're in the east coast of North Island. Um, if you're not, uh, thank God you're not there because it doesn't look like a nice day tomorrow. So yeah, Tim, later choice. See you in the next one. Yeah, I'll see you guys in the next live stream. And...